Hey, this is Paranormal Girl, and this video I'm going to talk about quite a frightening demon. It's called the Rabisu. And so let me show you a picture of what a Rabisu looks like. This is him. Rabisu are fallen angels that are transformed into vampiric spirits. They mainly appear human in form with demonic features and angelic wings. On this earth, they lurk in the shadows, hiding in dark recesses, waiting to attack the living as they enter their homes. So now I'm going to do a reading on the Rabisu. The Rabisu are demons lurking in the shadows of many homes. They mostly linger at the thresholds, waiting to attack those who enter the home. But who are these Rabisu? Where do they come from? Legend has it that the Rabisu are ancient beings, so ancient that it's believed that they were part of the angelic rebellion, banished forever from heaven. But even believing this theory, it does not explain the reason behind their bloodthirst. Why and how did these creatures evolve into vampiric spirits? The Rabisu were always blood drinkers. Originally, they fed on human energy. Why human energy, we ask ourselves. Why are we so special? Although many will want to argue that we are the same essence as the angels, we must realize that we are not. The human essence is a cosmic mystery. We are made of both the physical and the spiritual. I won't pretend here to know that the cos what the cosmic mystery is, but we cannot deny that there's an energy that these demons are attracted to. These vampiric, sp vampiric spirits first began to feed on this energy that we humans give off from the beginning of human existence. They were here before us and they were there at our creation. The more they fed on the energy, the stronger they became. And as they grew stronger, the Rabisu discovered that they could manipulate that energy. They used the energy from the humans to move objects and create a cause and effect. Not unlike that of a poltergeist. By creating this type of havoc, they produced great fear within the humans they haunted, thus creating a greater surge of energy. And this energy was dark and powerful, stronger than anything that the Rabisu had ever tasted. Stronger, these Rabisu became and they spread throughout the world. As they migrated to different continents, their influence grew and so did their power. They were feared and with great trepidation they were sought by magic users. The powers of the Rabisu had grown so strong by the time of the Mesopotamians that they were able to influence human thought under the guise of benevolent caring spirits. They taught dark mages and witches to conjure them. Once conjured, the Rabisu grew more dangerous because they were more now manifesting into physical form. No longer were they inciting man to violence through their thoughts and emotions, but they were now causing physical harm to humans and their surroundings. The violence that ensued after the conjuring was beyond anything that was ever seen before in the world of magic. Dark mages were conjuring these spirits to do their bidding, but instead they were being slaughtered by them. Once the Rabisu tasted the blood of humans, there was no returning. Their bloodlust was unstoppable, and then a strange thing happened. The magic users found a way to control the Rabisu, but not before some of the Rabisu found a way to stay in their physical forms. Now, legend has it that they are the original vampires. Well, I can't say that's true for sure, because, well, we don't really know the origin of vampires, do we? None of us do. 
as man is prone to do, compromises with these demons were made in exchange for power. Of course, anyone who believes he can control the Ribisu is pretty foolish. Because the Ribisu answer to no one. Do you know what I think? I think the Ribisu are actually the very ancient jinn. They were here before we were. So I think that's what the Ribisu actually is. And now the common man and woman goes in search of the Ribisu for help. They go to the conjurers promising a cup of their blood to sacrifice to these creatures. Is there a neighbour who was wronged? Is there someone you hate? A jilted lover, perhaps? Then seek the conjurers, for they will call forth a rebissu and exact revenge on your enemies. Of course, there are no promises that rebissu will not kill you in the process. Cause and effect. We come now to the question of how many rebissu there are. Unfortunately, no one really knows. If we go with the original theory that they were part of the angelic rebellion, then they were a group they were in a group of angels banished from heaven, and that it's that group, and the numbers must be immense. We are told that a third of the angelic host was cast down onto the earth, and although the number of angelic hosts is not exactly known, we can safely assume that there were hundreds of thousands. So that makes for a lot of rabisu. So another question is, do the rabisu reproduce? Well, actually they do, but not like us humans. They create the walking dead, the blood drinkers, vampires as we know them. And here we must ask, are the vampires they create more powerful than the rabisu themselves? Because of their physical nature of the vampire, I would believe they are. Although we can say they're at the top of spiritual disadvantage because supposedly vampires have no soul, but that is still up for the debate. Obviously that I don't do here. The Rabisu, although very powerful, are limited. They need the human to conjure them, whereas the vampire become, becomes autonomous, even having the power to create new vampires, the Rabisu are dangerous. So make no mistake, they do not possess the filters a vampire who was once a human possesses. They are animalistic in nature and their bloodlust is uncontrollable. They are harbingers of misfortune and death. Because the Rabisu feed off the fear that is generated at the moment of the attack. Those who die at their hands suffer greatly. The blood is ambrosia to these demons. What the evolution of these creatures will be in the future, no one can really tell. So what is your thought on the Rabisu? Do you think that they are the true vampires, the fallen angels that came to earth? Or are they something else? Are they the, actually the jinn? Now, I don't think the jinn are vampires as such. They were the original creatures on this earth. They came from the smoke. They evolved from the smoke. They are the original genies of the, the stories of the Thousand and One Nights from the Arabian Tales. The jinn rub the magic lamp. The jinn comes out, grant you a wish. Now, the rabisu is something totally different, I think. These are something different. These are something more. So what makes them the vampires? Why? Why are they so interested in the blood? Is it because the blood of the life? Is it something to do with the blood is the life? Like in the famous uh, Dracula film, blood is the life and it gives life to all beings. Is that what they are searching for? Is it that the, because they're the fallen angels, is it that they're jealous of us humans? 
Leave a comment in the section below. I'd like to know your ideas and thoughts on this. And please like and dis uh, subscribe to this channel. Thank you. And the last thought here. Don't forget. Sleep tight.